Hi there, everybody. Welcome to Verbling.com. And this is another hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa, and I am one of the teachers here that teaches English, of course. And I am from the United States. I live in Washington State. Uh, so for me right now, it's about 3 in the afternoon. And for this hour, I'm going to be offering a reading class. So if you are interested in practicing a bunch of skills in English, then join me here by clicking on that Join Class button, which is just right above the video that you are watching. Uh, you are probably watching this on the Verbling.com website. Um, Verbling.com is a language learning website that offers a lot of different services, but one of the main services is the classes. So you can practice your English pretty much every hour of every day, no matter if it's the morning or the night, because we have um, native English speakers that are from the United States and Canada mostly that live in different parts of the world. So we all have different times that we offer different types of classes. And you can pretty much come every hour on the hour to the Verbling.com website and you will see what is available. So if you have some time and you want to come and check it out, you can just come to Verbling.com anytime. And even if it's if you are late for class, you know, you're not coming right on the hour, that's okay. You can come a little bit later or towards the end whenever you whenever it works for you. You can also uh, look at my schedule and the other teachers schedules so you can plan ahead if you want to. And when people come into class then that's when we start. So hi there you guys. Hi Kervan. Wow Kervan you're go really going for it tonight. <laughs> hi. hi. You must have a lot of energy. <laughs> no, actually, I I got a flu. Oh, so you're sick. Okay. Yeah, but I'm better today. Oh, that's good. That's nice. Yes, I was sick for quite a while. Not really a flu, but just a cold and coughing and yeah, stuff. There is a, I have to explain, a, a endemic flu. Mm-hmm. In Turkey. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people have had the flu here this year as well. Yeah. So, yeah, the... in fact, I heard, I read something that quite a few people here were getting the flu right after they had a flu shot because there was some problem with the shot. I don't know. Um, shot? The vaccine, you know, like uh, here, vaccine. It, yeah. it's not really a vaccine. I don't know if it is, but every year they, you know, people get a shot. I don't do that, but some people get a shot, <laughs> and it's supposed to keep them from getting the flu every winter. But I read that some people got it right after getting the shot. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, the vaccination... Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it doesn't work. Vaccination doesn't work because the yeah. virus always changes itself. It's uh, uh, they don't have the DNA. Mm -hmm. They have um, what is, yeah, and the it, the virus uh, always uh, uh, change their. Uh, um, for example, the vaccination uh, uh, prepare uh, which kind of uh, virus um, they expect mm. this year, but it's mm -hmm. not easy to uh, understand or uh, right. before to know ahead of time or something. Yeah. What? Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yuki, on your very irregular schedule again. Yes, I I, <laughs> I woke up early morning, not the morning, maybe yeah. <laughs> night, late night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. 
I'm, I'm you know, today, today is Christmas in right. Russia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Today is, it, today is Christmas. Today. And then last night, uh, was, the, was there a celebration too? Yes, yes. Uh, several uh, hours ago, uh, uh -huh. Rus in Russian church, in Russian Orthodox churches, uh, there, was, there, there are services. Oh, okay. So believers of mm -hmm. Orthodox, um, Russian Orthodox, mm -hmm. uh, gathered, gathered, gathered there and mm -hmm. gave, a, gave a play. Yes. Uh, Vladimir Putin, <laughs> yeah. President of Russia, uh, now now in Sochi, in, in, in the city of Sochi. Do you know Sochi? Mm -hmm. uh, you know? No. Haven't you? No. I think I've heard of it. Why? No. Soon you'll, you'll know, because soon there, there will be, there will be a Olympic the Olympics? game. The Olympics, yes. yeah. Oh, okay. The okay. Olympics game in this year. Uh -huh. uh, will take place in in the city of city of Sochi. Okay, that's now, where it is. So president uh, pre president uh, met uh, uh, Sochi, yeah. Christmas in mm -hmm. in Sochi. Oh, uh, okay. He is also believer of Orthodox Church, so he he visit a uh, uh, church. Mm -hmm. Orthodox Church and and gave a play. Oh, okay. Is is yeah. it um is it common for uh, Russian leaders to be Orthodox uh, Russian Christians? Is that yes, typical now, or nowadays? Now, is, now uh, you know uh, after 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 communism. Russia, uh, uh, yes, after co after collapse of communism, there there was only three presidents, yeah, mm -hmm. Eritrean and uh, Putin and Mitrobedev, and okay. again Putin. So they are all they are all uh, believer of Orthodox Church. Yes. Uh -huh. But before, of of course, there is no church. Ch church uh, um, free. Um, how to say? Uh, regions. Uh, right. uh, Regions were banned by right. by, by by government, uh, Soviet Union. Right. So many churches are destroyed, and mm. uh, even there there are even um, even visiting uh, visiting visiting a church in in Christmas uh, mm. has 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 been. Um, Band. Band, band, yeah. Band. Okay. Uh huh. And even there, there was no Christmas in the time oh, of wow. Soviet Union. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wow. Recently, uh, <laughs> Christmas appears appeared uh -huh. in Russia. Yes. Wow. Of course, be before the revolution, there was a uh, there was a there there are churches and mm -hmm. Christmas. But after the revolution of the Soviet Union, yeah, uh, re region was uh, banned. Yeah, how how long was that? I don't remember. Um, my Russian history isn't very good, but how long was it under uh, communism? How many years? Do you uh, know? Revolution has occurred. Uh, 1911 or something. Nine, like? 1912, maybe. Twelve. Okay, 1912. I, uh -huh. Yes. Yes. So almost um, nine, eighty or ninety, eighty or ninety, ninety years, uh, Soviet Union continued. Uh huh. But 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 it collapsed. Collapsed. Ninety ninety two. Ninety one. Yeah, yeah. mm. Ninety one. Okay. So yes. around eighty years. Have Have you remembered that 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 time? Yeah. <laughs> when yeah, Soviet Gorbachev. Union. Has yeah, done. well, I was in um, I was in Berlin. I was at the Berlin Wall when it was starting to come down. I was living in Germany, yes. and I visited the Berlin Wall. And my grandpa, he uh -huh. he got a piece of the Berlin Wall <laughs> as a <laughs> as a like a, a memorabilia. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
you know, Soviet Union was, was, um, big rival of America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the time of yes. Soviet Union, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, especially 1960s and 1970s, mm. um, uh, when when uh, very severe uh, um, competition uh, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, cosmos. <laughs> mm. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Conquering cosmos. Yes. Uh, ha has been has has been has has had had been taking taking had uh, take take place then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Soviet Union was a big rival of America. Mm -hmm. Soviet Union had had a, had a big uh, had a uh, power, yeah. strong power, but now. <laughs> not not now as much. Russia, you know, Russia lost the power. Yeah. So, so now China is a big rival of America. <laughs> China, well, yeah, it's yes. a big, big country. Lots of people there. Yes. Lo lots of um, business yes. businesses happening. I heard, uh, I heard that America had a great debt, great debt, 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 great debt uh, uh -huh. from Depth. China. Yes. Hmm. Um, yeah. So yes. Let me ask Kervan. Kervan, what do you mean in Istanbul? There's Christmas too because there are Russian Orthodox people there. Not Russian, maybe no. Kyrgyz. Uh, yeah, there is uh, a minority uh, Kyrgyz oh. uh, Orthodox. Uh, they came from yeah uh, Roman Empire. Oh, uh, okay. They still live in Istanbul, and uh, oh. I think uh, yeah they are Orthodox and. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, there is a uh, council, I think, uh, in Istanbul. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, in Be only only Istanbul has uh, Christian and uh, Jews because mm. uh, we changed the, the Muslims uh, after with Kirik after World War One, mm -hmm. but. Uh, mm -hmm. Istanbul uh, uh, Orthodox wanted to leave here. They don't want to go to Kirik. I see. Okay. Yeah. Christianism, in... Christianism came from Turkey. Yeah? Um, uh, Russian, Russian uh, Catholic Church came from Turkey, yeah? but yeah. but now now national region of Turkey is not. Not Christian, not Christianism, but mm. but Islam. Yeah. Excuse Am I me? right? National re religion, religion, national of religion of Turkey. Now, no, not not Christian, not Christian, no. not Christianism. No, no, but, most, but Islam. Right. Islam, yeah. Most of Turkish people are Muslim, but uh, in Istanbul. Uh, there are a group of Christian, and the concept is in Istanbul. So many uh, Greek uh, uh, Protestants come to uh, Orthodox come to Istanbul to uh, Istanbul to celebrate Christmas. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Greek Orthodox. Okay. Yeah, I'm going. What? what? Do you know why why Russia selected to uh, Christian Christianism as a national national religion? Um, maybe thousand years ago. Do you know why? I don't no. know why. Uh, firstly, Islam, why? believer of Islam came to uh, Russia. Uh, it, it, it was a Kiev, and uh, nowadays it is uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, uh -huh. uh, firstly, uh, Islam believer recommended Russia, uh, Ukraine, to um, uh, to select select Islam as, uh, as a national region, but but after after this, uh, pe people from Turkey uh, came came to Russia and uh, on, uh, same, same as uh, same recommended to and uh, Russia select Russia um, compared to the regions and selected Christianism. Because Christianism didn't didn't ban the drinking, hmm. drinking alcohol. Yeah. 
<laughs> Is it a band? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so they, they wanted to keep drinking. So they tried yeah, that, that, Christianity. That's the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many, many believe that. I don't know if it is yeah. true or not, but <laughs> I don't know. Many, many say that. Yeah, I don't know. Hi, Raquel. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Christmas, Yuki, by the way. Yeah. Yes, hola. <laughs> hola. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the epiphany, is what we call it in English. Is the uh, it's the return of the three kings, right? Or the when they went to see baby Jesus. That's the story. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the day when we receive gifts uh -huh. in Spain. Right. Yeah. Or you get charcoal if you weren't very good. I just exactly, exactly. <laughs> Did you ever get charcoal when you were a kid? No, not because I am a very good girl. Yes, of course. Very good. Okay, good. All right. Well, welcome also to Norel who just popped in. Hi, Norel. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be in your class. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, let's see, I have an article, it's actually about churros. Okay. It's, all right, <laughs> we have it probably, Raquel, are you an expert on churros? <laughs> no, not, I, I'm, in fact, I'm not very uh, uh, fond of churros, to be oh, yeah? honest. Yeah? But my family is, but I don't like them so much. Oh, what's not to like? It's just flour and sugar. <laughs> And olive oil. And all oh, with olive oil too. Yeah. Okay. Really, with olive oil, that does it give it a olive taste because of the olive oil? Sorry. Like, does it have a funny taste because of the olive oil? Like well, that, I, I don't know, but in Spain we use uh, we. Yeah. Almost always uh, we use uh, olive oil. Yeah. To cook. But is that why you don't like the taste, or you just is there another reason you don't like the churro? Is because it because I think it's quite greasy? Oh yes, okay. It's not very good for my stomach. But the, we have two different kinds of churros, okay. the big ones and the small ones. And I love the small ones, but not the churros. Oh okay, all right. Well, you can maybe tell us the difference here when we're we're gonna read along and. We're going to find some pictures also. So everybody, let's see, I put the link up already. It looks like people have been opening it. You can also just look at it on the screen if you want. This is actually from uh, the New York Times. So in the New York Times, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with the New York Times, but it's a very, very large um, newspaper and, of course, now online. Um, and it has lots of different sections. So you can see here it says world, U.S., New York, region, business, so all different types of topics. And this one is from the um, New York region section. So it's talking about a neighborhood joint. So a neighborhood joint is what we call like a neighborhood coffee shop or a restaurant or tea shop. Something like that would be considered a joint, so a business like where you go and you eat food and stuff. So that's what this article is about. It's about a local to that area. So the area of New York is Upper East Side. So that's in a Manhattan, which is, if you go to New York City, that's the main place uh, people go as tourists. They go to Manhattan. Um, so Upper East Side, probably nearby um, a Central Park area, perhaps. I've been there twice, but I'm not an expert, so I don't know <laughs> for sure. But this is what... Uh, it looks like. So this is the shop, the, the place. And it's funny because it says Le Churro, which is not Spanish, really, but um, classic recipe from Spain. So we're just going to read about this. In the reading classes, I like to choose all types of different articles so that you guys get exposed to a lot of different uh, types of language. And so this, and I thought a lot of times we've been having a lot of uh, Spanish uh, students in class, so I'm glad we have one at least. Sometimes we have more, and you might be able to tell us some more information after we read. Okay, 
I'll start. Churro shop owner serves up a Spanish tradition. It was a singular procession that filed into Le Churro on Lexington Avenue between 83rd and 84th Streets one recent afternoon. Eyes wide, riveted on the menu hung high above the counter, children buckling under their backpacks and harried mothers all seemed transfixed by the weight of the decision. decision. Chocolate or caramel sauce? Okay, Yuki, why don't you start us off there? Okay. Um, churro shop owner served up a Spanish tra tradition. It was a singular procession that filled, filled into the churro on Dexton Avenue between 83rd, 83rd and 84th. 84th? 84th Street one, one, recent, one recent afternoon. Eyes wide, revited on, on the menu, hung, hung high above the cold counter. Children back, buckling under their backpacks and hurried mothers all seemed transfixed by the weight of, of the decision. Chocolate or caramel sauce? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's quite a few words here in just that first um, paragraph. It was a singular procession. So singular just means one. And procession is another word that we use for a line. Or in Britain they use the word queue. So you can think of a long line of people in one single, we call it single file line, one person behind the other person, that filed into. So here's a phrasal verb. To file into means to move into. So they were lined up outside and they were going into or entering the shop or filing into. So there's many different ways to say the same thing. So this was happening one recent afternoon, so a couple maybe last week or you know two weeks ago or something like that. And then this whole uh, sentence, pretty long sentence there, just describes what was happening. So eyes wide means everybody was you know, looking around at the new place. Riveted on the menu. Riveted means you're like fixed. You're just looking straight at the menu and you're kind of looking at it like you're excited and you're captivated by what you see. It was high up, hung high above the counter. Children buckling under. So as you notice, for, as far as the language goes, they're not using verbs. You could say, like, eyes were wide open, <clears throat> people um, were riveted, you know, riveted on the menu, hung high above, where children were buckling under their backpacks, but you don't need to say that. You can just say children buckling, which means they were kind of um, hunched over, the, their backpacks were heavy, so they were kind of leaning over, and harried mothers, so describing how the mothers looked, it look, they looked like they were tired. <laughs> or maybe they were uh, tired probably because of their kids running all around and this kind of thing. So all of these people, so it's kind of setting the scene there. So you get this image when you read these words. You have the picture in your mind about what's going on. Um, all of these people were transfixed. That means they were like under a spell, just standing there staring. And they had to make a decision. So they were transfixed by the weight of the decision. The weight here means like the importance of the decision. And then it's kind of a joke because it's not really that important. But it is if you're trying to eat something really good. And the decision is should I have chocolate or caramel sauce. And there's a couple of ways to say this word. You can say caramel or you can say caramel. Both are said in English. Caramel or caramel. Depends on what part of the United States you're from. <laughs> I say caramel. Caramel sauce. Usually, sometimes I say caramel. Opened just days before Hurricane Sandy, the bright 375 square foot boutique is the inspiration of Elena Madariaga, a fashionable 40 something woman who is most probably the only hedge fund lawyer to run a churro shop on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. <laughs> Probably. Okay, Raquel. 
Okay. Open the jar the day before Fucking Sunday. The bright uh, 375 square foot boutique is the inspiration of Elena Madariaga, a fashionable 40 something woman who is most probably the only hedge fund lawyer to run a tour shop on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, so Hurricane Sandy, maybe you guys remember that was a big hurricane that happened in the New York area a couple of years ago. So that's it. They opened their shop just right before that happened. 375 square foot. So here in the U.S. we use uh, square foot rather than meters. And I wouldn't know how many meters that is. But it's not very big. It's a small, small shop. And that's why it's called a boutique. Because it's a fancy kind of gourmet specialty shop. Um, we call those boutiques. Um, it was inspired, it was the inspiration, so that's the noun, the inspiration of Elena. And so she thought of it. It was her idea. She created this uh, idea. She's very fashionable, so she's into what's new. And probably the only hedge fund lawyer, so maybe you guys have heard of hedge funds, other type of investment um, that you can do, but she's a lawyer. But she runs. So to run a shop means to own it and to manage it. So she runs the shop. After slugging it out in finance for 18 years, Ms. Madariaga, a native of Madrid, needed a breather from Wall Street. Her aha moment came during a vacation on the Costa del Sol in 2011. I was watching my children and their friends playing on the piazza and munching on churros, she recalled, and I thought, that's what I should do. Okay, she had an inspiration. Okay, Norel. After slugging it out in financial for 18 years, Mrs. Madariaka, a native of Madrid, needed a breather from Wall Street. Her aha moment came the real vacation on the Costa del Sol in 2011. I was watching my children and their friends on chores. She recalled, and I thought that's what I should do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. After slugging it out in finance. Okay, slugging it out. That means like fighting. When you're slugging, it means you're punching or hitting or fighting it out. So, you know, you can imagine the idea is that she spent a lot of tough years in the financial industry. So slugging it out means she was, you know, she had to fight her way through that career. Um, she's from Madrid, a native of, and she needed a breather so she needed a break to breathe you know do something different get out of that same old thing that she was doing so her aha moment that's the moment when you say to yourself aha I know what I should do and that's what she had an aha moment when she was on vacation she was watching her children eating uh, munching on that just means munching is like chewing on or eating it's uh, it's another way to say eating, but it gives you a little bit more of a visual of somebody kind of munching, chewing it a bunch, bite, taking a lot of bites. You know, it's just another way, a different way to say eating. In English, when we're writing stuff, we try to, there's a simple way of writing, and then there's a way that gives you more visual images in your mind, so you have a different uh, picture. She recalled, so she remembered. So, and she thought to herself, that's what I should do. So that's often, oftentimes the beginning of a business. This when somebody has that inspiration. Oh yeah, that's what I should do. The origins, the origins of the churro are obscure. Were the fried dough flutes invented by Spanish shepherds herding long-haired sheep, churra? Were they brought to Spain by Portuguese sailors? It remains a mystery. But one thing is certain. In Spain, no one has breakfast at their desk, Ms. Madariaga said. You go to a local bar and you get hot chocolate or café con leche and churros. 
Another Spanish tradition involves churros and chocolate just before bed, after a night of heavy partying. That's why many churrerias open around 5 a.m., she said. Sorry, what, 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 what kind of food is churro? I haven't seen and I haven't tried. Okay, let me yeah, let me find a picture so we all know what we're talking about here. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Yeah, no. Just it's a little pastry. Sweet? It's made flour and dough like a little dough pastry. Yes, it's sweet. It has sugar on it and you dip it in chocolate. Kind of a, a kind really, of a donut. Um, no? Thick? Is it pretty th a thick chocolate like this? Oh. Yes, exactly. Kind of like a, a long donut. <laughs> yeah, oh. nothing to do with donuts. Like. Nothing to do with donuts. It's a dessert, dessert. Like a funnel, yeah. Dessert. It's a, dessert. A dessert. Uh, well, I don't know, Raquel. When do people no. usually eat them? It said here in the article, breakfast or late night. Yes, it's for Is breakfast. Right? Yes, for breakfast. Breakfast. Always yes. you eat them with chocolate. No, yeah. also no? with coffee, coffee con leche, coffee with milk. What? Coffee with oh. milk. Mm -hmm. ah, yes. Coffee with milk. Oh. <coughs> but see. it's uh, something that, that uh, it's very traditional from Spain. That's true. Mm. And it's sometimes, uh, for you know, because we have dinner very late in Spain, yeah. uh -huh. so just uh, around six, seven o'clock in the evening. Before dinner, it's also mm -hmm. they also can have some churros, mm -hmm. uh, like a snack. It's a kind of dessert yes, in snack, after yeah. Tea. yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Well, Yuki, you might not know, but in Spain, you could eat dinner really late, like what nine or ten o'clock. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Or later. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh. And so uh, you might want to eat something like a snack, but more like around six o'clock. Uh, yeah. So you I could see. have this. It's like an af afternoon. Yeah, but snack. for example, you can have you can have it for breakfast all over mm -hmm. the year. But if you want to take uh, it as snack uh, in the evening, it's usually in winter because you oh, take okay. something hot to drink. So that's sure. why. Now, is this something that people make at home or just something they get out at a restaurant or a coffee shop or something? Usually you take it out, but uh -huh. you can also buy the dough and mm -hmm. fry it at home. Oh, okay. Well, how do you pronounce the word dough? Dough. The dough. dough. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, it's a weird, you spell it weird way, but it's just dough. Yeah. Is dough the same as butter? Uh, no. Dough, no. Dough is usually a mixture of uh, flour. It could be a couple of things, but maybe the yes. dough is flour, sugar, butter, salt, you know, something like that. Whatever you, the word dough, sorry, um, is used for, um, turn this off. Anytime you're going to make like cookies or pastry or something like that, you make the dough first, and then you cook it, and then it becomes the other thing, like the cake or the cookies or whatever pastry. Yeah. Is it hard? Is it hard? No. Crunching. Crunching. Oh. Uh, it's kind of crunch? crunchy on the outside, but soft, isn't it? It's pretty soft in the middle. Uh, pretty, yes, pretty it's, soft. It's crusty mm. outside, mm -hmm. but it is uh, soft inside. Yes. Mm. And, mm -hmm. But Lisa, I mean, I mean that way. What's the difference between dough and oh, batter? Oh, oh, batter, batter, batter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The difference between a batter is that the batter is uh, liquid. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's true. If you have a batter, like you're going to make a cake, for example, usually you have a cake batter, and you have the flour, and then you have, you know, maybe butter sugar, but then you have something liquid like milk. That's batter. Mm. So like if you're going to make pancakes, you have a batter. 
and the, mm -hmm. there's a difference. It's probably best if I just kind of show you a picture here. So a picture, this looks like batter right here. It's something you're going to pour. Like here, this is for making crepes. You're going to mm -hmm. pour it into a hot pan. That's batter. But dough is something like you would make bread out of or cookies or something like that. Uh, so it looks like this. It's something you can knead. Then so it's, I it's, it's not liquid. Okay, but then... So I, I wonder what it's like for churros. I would say that it is not so liquid as you saw before, but for sure it's not so thick mm. as, uh, as the dough. Yeah, here we have a little picture of it. Maybe you have to you have to you have to melt the oil. So that's the oil. Then you get the oil ready to go, and then you fry it up and melt chocolate. But they didn't really show you the batter. Let's see for the churros. I'll try to find it out for you. One second. Hmm. It's just sugar and cinnamon. Let's see. Make the sugar. Yeah, I don't know how they make the shape. There must be a way, like you have to put the batter or something into the shape, maybe? Yes, there is a mold. A, a mold, mold, yeah. A yeah. Mold. So then it might actually be a... Uh, oh, it's kind of like a dough, probably. Like this, you yeah, have to, you can make it like this with like a paste. We call that like a paste, actually. Mm -hmm. If you put it in one of these bags... And then the tip of the bag has these uh, sh like sharp points. So when you push the the paste through mm -hmm. the bag, then it gives it that shape with the rims. Yeah, paste. That's called the pastry bag, and you can put the pastry dough or the pastry paste. Uh, we call it sometimes. Yeah, but this is for a small tool. If you want to make. Real churros, you, you cannot do with this kind of. You know, oh. these churros are, are, they are totally different. You know, this with the man. Yeah. This is totally different. That's the big kind. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you need something else. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's a picture from Mexico there. Hmm. Okay. Cool. That's what it is, Yuki. So it's yummy, sweet um, pastry. Yes. Like thing, Thank yeah. You. Mm hmm Okay, so, Kervan, <laughs> you can read now. <laughs> there you go. The origins origins of the churro are obscure. Where the fried dough invented by Spanish shepherds herding long-haired sheep. Chura, where they brought to, to Spain by uh, Portuguese sa sailors. It remains a mystery, but one thing is certain. In Spain, no one has breakfast at their desk, and Mrs. Madarica said. You go to a local bar and... Uh, a local bar and you get hot chocolate or coffee, a corn, leche, and churros. Another Sp Spanish tradition uh, involves churros and chocolate just before bed. After a night or heavy partying, that's why many churros churros open around uh, 5 a.m., she said. Mm -hmm. it yeah, that's stopped there. Uh, Good. So the origins. Uh, origins just means where did it come from? Where did it originate from? Uh, so that's the verb is to originate. So we don't know. It's kind of obscure. It's kind of um, when something is obscure, it's unclear. We don't really know. Where it came from, it could, and they call they're calling them fried dough flutes. Flutes is that shape, the shape that they are. That's called a flute shape, 
and maybe they were invented by the shepherds, the, the people who take care of sheep. Uh, they had some type of sheep that's called a chura, a long-haired type of sheep. Or maybe the uh, Portuguese sailors brought it. It remains a mystery, so it's still a mystery. It's still not known. It's unknown. But one thing is certain. So one thing is for sure. She says that in Spain, no one has breakfast at their desk. So what she means there is like at work. So she was, sounds like uh, she was a very busy person in the finance uh, industry. And in the United States, a lot of people are known to be like workaholics. And so they just work while they're eating and everything. So I think she's saying that, that Spanish people don't do that. Also, this is uh, café con leche. That's in Spanish. That just means um, coffee with milk, a specific kind of coffee with milk, and the churros. Another Spanish tradition, so a custom, something that they've been doing for a long time, involves churros and chocolate just before bed. So before you go to bed, after a night of heavy partying. So heavy partying usually means if you've been drinking alcohol and you've been really having a a good time and um, maybe you, you know you're going to bed very late <laughs> and that's why and this is another the Spanish word and that's the churro shop so that's the name of the shop where they sell the churros is that right Raquel yes yes mm -hmm. it's, they only do it they are only dedicated to make churros yeah where where they make them um, they're dedicated to doing just that right like yes. they yeah, something like this. You can go there and just buy the churros. Okay, that's and they're in other countries too, in like Mexico, Guatemala, different places in uh, Latin America have uh, churros. <laughs> Is it motivating you, you Yuki? You need to take a trip to yeah. Spain. <laughs> Practice your Spanish. Chure, churreria. Yeah. Churreria, yeah. In Spanish. Churrerias. Churrerias. At, at Le Churro, customers cuddle up on the blonde wood banquet, or banquet, sorry. <laughs> Chur cuddle up on the blonde wood banquet, that's a little, um, just a place to sit, like a bench, across paper cones holding bouquets of freshly made churros. On one wall, a naive fresco, fresco designed by a group of Spanish Graffiti artist depicts the churro process and touts the fritter's nutritional properties. No eggs, dairy, or trans fats. Only a mix of flour, water, and salt. Okay, Yuki. Yes. At the churro, customers cuddled up, cuddled, cuddled up on the brown wood. wood Banquet across paper cones holding holding bouquets of freshly made churros. Mm -hmm. Churros. Churros, yeah? Yeah. Churros. On the on on one wall a naive fran, fras, fresco. Naive, Naive fresco designed designed by a group of Spanish graffiti graffiti artists this depicts the churro process and towards the fritters nutritional properties. No egg, dairy or trans fat trans fats, only a mix of flour, water and salt. Mm -hmm. Good. So a blonde wood banquet. So I'm going to show you a picture of what a banquet is. Uh, let's see here. And this is kind of a blonde wood. So it's a light wood. If you think of blonde as the color of the hair or something. So any kind of little bench like this where you would sit down in the shop, for example. You could have it in your kitchen. But it's kind of attached to the wall. That's the banquet. Um, and... Let's see. So people were sitting there, and there were some flowers, bouquets of flowers, bouquets. And um, in French, it's bouquet, right, uh, Norel? Yes, in French, it's bouquet. 
bouquet, but in, in English we say it bouquet usually. <laughs> Sometimes bouquet. we might say bouquet, bouquet yeah. or bouquet. <laughs> but so. usually with the article, le, le yes. bouquet. Right, yes, right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, and then on the wall there's a fresco. That just means a painting. So if you see here, uh, they're talking about this painting right over here, and you can't really see it, but that's what a fresco is. Just another name for like a painting, style of painting. And let's see, it was designed by a group of Spanish graffiti artists. So I think you guys know what graffiti is, right? With, where they do things on the walls and stuff. Um, and it depicts. To depict means to show. So it shows the process of making the churros. And touts, to tout means to talk to talk about something, um, how great something is. So they're talking about how great it is nutritionally. So the nutritional properties um, of the fritter. So a fritter is something that you fry, some pastry dough that you fry in oil. That is called a fritter. It's been fried. So it doesn't have any eggs, doesn't have any milk products or any trans fats. Um, like you get if you cook with uh, corn oil or something like that. Um, it's just flour, water, and salt. Churros do suffer from a bit of an image problem. It is fried dough, after all. But Ms. Madariaga campaigns hard. They are so much lighter than the butter madeleines I bake for my kids, she said. Okay, let's see. So one morning, Kate Fiscus, a 24-year-old fundraiser who works in the area, sat waiting for two dozen churros to emerge from the kitchen. It's a co-worker's request for her birthday, she explained. If they traveled well, I would bring them home to Scranton, but I would eat them all before we got there. Okay. Whose turn is it? I forgot. Is it Narelle? Uh, Raquel? I think it's mine. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Churros to suffer for the bit of an image problem. It is fried dough after all. But Miss Madariaga campaigns hard. They are so much lighter than the butter madeleines I baked for my kids, she said. One morning, Kate Fiskus, a 24-year-old fundraiser who works in the area, sat waiting for two dozen churros Churros to emerge from the kitchen. It's a co worker's request for her birthday. She's playing. If they travel well, I would bring them home to Scranton, but I would eat them all before we got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So they suffer from a bit of an image problem. So to suffer from something means that you're, it's kind of the bad part about it. So they have a little bit of a bad reputation or an image, that, and that's a problem. So they have a problem because people think they're fatty because they're fried. So here in the United States, um, a lot of people um, don't want to eat so much fried food because they think it's not good for their health. And so this is fried dough. But she says it's a lot lighter than these other kinds of cookies that she makes. These madeleines um, are a type of cookie, let me see, that she makes for her kids that have like a lot of uh, butter in them. So maybe you guys are familiar with these kind of cookies. So she's saying that these kind of cookies are actually heavier because of the butter that they use uh, to make them. So they're lighter, lighter uh, than the Madeleines. And she said, and then there's a little story here about this lady who came to get a bunch of them and she was getting two dozen of them she was waiting for them to emerge from, so to come out of the kitchen. So she was waiting for them to get finished so she could take them to her colleague or co-worker because she wanted them for her birthday. And she said she would bring them home. I would bring them home, but, so that's the common construction in English when we say I would do something if or I would do something, but I can't. So she thinks she would eat them all before she got there. So she doesn't want to take a chance. <laughs> it's the strongest coffee in the area, said James Brewer, a personal trainer. I come here every morning for it. 
Maria Gomez, a Spanish native living in New York, had chosen Le Churro for a meeting and was introducing Alice Trimmer, a churro novice, to the proper ritual. She held her churro by its tip and dunked it briskly, delicately into her hot chocolate. It reminds me of what I grew up with, Ms. Gomez said. Okay, Norel. It's the strongest cafe in the area, said James Brewer, a personal trainer. I come here every morning for it. Maria Gomez, a Spanish native living in New York, had chosen the churro for a meeting and was introducing Alice Kramer, a churro novice, to the proper ritual. She held her churro by its tip and dunked it briskly, delicately, into her hot chocolate. It reminds me of what I grew up with, Mrs. Gomez said. Okay. Strongest coffee. So usually um, people mean that's really dark, strong coffee. Um, a personal trainer, so somebody who works with people um, doing workouts in the gym, for example. He goes there every morning. Uh, let's see, introducing a churro novice, so somebody who's a beginner is a novice, a person who's just learning something for the first time. And she was showing her the proper ritual. So proper means the right way of doing something, and the ritual is how you eat it, the ritual of the special way of eating the churro by, by taking the tip of it, so the end of it, and dunking it in. So to dunk something into something is where you put it in. So you, you dunk it into the chocolate, the hot chocolate. And you do it briskly, so that's kind of like quickly, but delicately. So not very rough. You don't want to be rough or tough with it. You want to do it very delicately, lightly, into the chocolate. And she says it's reminding her of what it was like when she grew up. So she grew up with chocolate, hot chocolate, and churros. That homemade hot chocolate, thick and dark, is stirred automatically in a massive glass jar that sits on the counter and can double as a dip. I like churros, said Graham Yarden, a well-traveled 10-year-old. Between bites, I tried them in Notting Hill. Later in the afternoon, Spanish, Italian, and even Yiddish, the store is certified kosher, reverberated in the small space. Perched along the counter, Abigail Rice was there with Mal Malkaya Levine, a friend from Toronto. I brought her for the experience, Ms. Rice said. Okay, Kervan. Kervan is not here. Okay, <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay, Yuki. Okay. That homemade hot chocolate, thick, thick and dark, is, is stirred automatically in the massive glass jar that sits on the counter and can double as a dip. I feel hungry. <laughs> What's that? I like, I like churros said Graham Yarden, uh, well traveled 10 years, 10 years old between bite. I tried, I tried them in Notting Hill, or oh, Notting Hill. Later in the afternoon, Spanish, Italian, and even Yiddish, correct? Yiddish, Yiddish. The Yiddish, yeah. Yiddish, Yiddish. Yiddish. The store is cert certified kosher, kosher, the the verb the verb reverberated reverberated yeah reverberated in the small space perched along the counter Abigail race was there with Mar Mar Malkia Levin, Levin <laughs> yes, a friend. Hard work. <laughs> <Levin. laughs> Name. <laughs> Malkia. 
Oh, Malkai. Malkai. Yeah. Malkai, Malkai 11. Uh-huh. A friend from Toronto. I brought her for, for the experience, Miss Race said. Yes, good. Um, all right, we'll leave that for Kerman. He lost out on this one. Okay, so the homemade hot chocolate, thick. So it's not thin, it's thick. So lots of melted chocolate in there and very dark. Is stirred automatically. So to stir it means to mix it around um, in a massive glass jar. So massive just means a huge, like a big glass jar that sits on the counter and can double as a dip. So it can either be the hot chocolate that you drink or it can be the hot chocolate that you dip. So that means to double as something. If something can be used for two different things, you can say it doubles as this other thing. So this 10-year-old boy, he likes his churros. (laughs) And it's in New York, so there's lots of different uh, people from different places around the world. And so that's what it's saying. So just later in the afternoon, there were Spanish people, Italian people, even Yiddish, which is uh, Jewish people, because it's certified kosher. Kosher is the specific way that Jewish people like to prepare their food. So you can um, get certified so that people know. And reverberated, this is a big long word. It just means there was a lot of noise. There was like a hum Like it was just a lot of people in there, like you hear people talking, so it was like action. So it reverberated, it was um, lively. Um, Perched along the counter, perched just means like um, standing up next to the counter, really. Perched, like a bird can be perched on a a tree limb, for example, a branch. Um, But if you're perched at the counter or along the counter, you're not standing on top of the counter, you're just standing next to it, you know, talking, drinking, eating, stuff like that. And so the last little paragraph says, and it looked as though the two of them had solved the sauce quandary. We're getting the samplers, she said, one of each. So if you remember at the top, there was, they started off the article with the big decision, chocolate or caramel sauce. And in the final little paragraph, we see they're going to get one of each because they're going to have the sampler. Okay, Kerman, why don't you just read that last little part there? And it looked as though the, the two of them had solved the sauce quand- quandary. 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 Quandary, yeah, like dilemma. Mm-hmm. We are getting the sampler, mm-hmm. she said, one of each. Mm-hmm. Good. So a quandary is when you can't make up your mind. You have like a dilemma. Should I do this or should I do that? You don't know what to do. That's the quandary. And the sauce is, they didn't, you know, the type of sauce, the dipping sauce. And so they got the sampler. When you go to restaurants, a lot of times you can order a sampler plate and it gives you a little bit of each thing that there is. They're going to get one of each. So one caramel and one chocolate. Okay, Yuki, are you excited to go to Spain now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling from studying Spanish now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, just, I just began to study Spanish. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, a, month, a month ago. <laughs> okay. But, okay. but now, now I, have, I have a new motivation. New motivation. To study more. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean Someday that in the future, uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll go to Spain and try uh, churros. Yeah? yeah, churros. Churros. Okay. Churros. 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 Sorry. Spanish, churros. Spanish food is yeah. one of the best motivations to study Spanish. <laughs> yes, it is. You can enjoy our meals, not only churros, but you know, jamón, medio, paella, tortilla de patata. Exactly. Why to learn Spanish? Why to come to Spain? Say that again. There are a lot of reasons oh, yeah. why you should come to Spain. Yes, for sure. Yes, Spain's wonderful. Yes, Yuki. Mm. Practice yes. your Spanish. You don't live very I... far away. 
<laughs> I believe it. I believe that Spain is a very fascinating country. Yes. Yes. Ka yes. Dinner time for Nurel. <laughs> Good timing, Nurel. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's a also want, My wife also want to, want to visit, visit to Spanish. Yeah, yeah, to Spain. Visit Thank to Spain. you. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And maybe Thank you, very much. you should try some churros someday. <laughs> yes. yes. I cook for everybody if you have to Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> bye, good. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you.